in my continuing uh, view of African Americans who fought for liberty, I'm going to talk about a war hero. And a war hero who was able to become a war hero because of a jacket. And of course, a straw hat. I am talking today about Robert Smalls. I am a real American, fight for the rights of every man. I am a real American, fight for what's right, fight for your life. First thing that we're going to look at is how Robert Smalls entered the public eye. And this is because he stole the planter, a Confederate ship captained by C.J. Riley. And this was explosive. Newspapers in the South was complaining, oh, how can you let them slaves do that? Uh, newspaper in the North was saying, hey, look at these great slaves, look at what they did. And this next article looks at just what happened. Tubby. Uh, the fellow slaves joked that they looked almost alike. And that gave Smalls a plan. He told his fellow slaves, don't ever repeat this joke. Smalls told his fellow slaves the plan. Next time they're alone, he will pilot the planter to freedom. Smalls knew that he could do this because he was the pilot of the planter. Even before the Civil War, he has been tasked with guiding the planter, and he was up for one more tour. Smalls and his shipmates would get that last tour on May 12, 1862. The Confederate crewmen left. And that is when Robert Smalls and his crew decided they would leave as well. Going out of the harbor using the hand signals, the boat whistles, and just the overall posture of the ship's official captain, Robert Smalls was able to maneuver his planter to freedom. And freedom was with the USS Onward, a Union ship. However, as he got closer, Robert Smalls realized, hey, the that the Union soldiers or sailors may mistake him for a Confederate. So he had his wife give him a white bed sheet and they hoisted it up as a sign of surrender and then promptly delivered the Confederate ship planter to the Union. The sources for this work was not obvious. When it comes to methodology, it seems that this is an archive study of both primary and secondary data. As you can see, Robert Smalls was a very smart individual. Uh, he knew how to get things done. But he just didn't get things done when he gave the planter to the Union. He fought for the Union, and after that, he fought in the halls of Congress, becoming a senator and a congressman. And so this next article looks at that time in his life. This next work is by Okan Edik Aya, and this looks at black politicians during Reconstruction and gives a case study on Robert Smalls. In 1886, Robert Smalls won his first seat as an elected official. From 1870 to 1874, he served in the state senate, chairing the printing committee. In 18, 
74, he ran and won a seat at the U.S. Congress, representing Southeast South Carolina District. Throughout his time in public office, he would face a whole lot of discrimination and even violence. However, this did not deter him. He kept on fighting in the public arena uh, for those who needed him the most. Later in his career, he was appointed collector of the port in, in Beaufort. He would go back and forth in this position whenever Republicans held the presidency. Look at the third article. A quick aside. The articles that we have spoken about today come from the American History and Life database. This is a very good database. It has a lot of information on a lot of key things. However, some give just abstracts and not the full article. So that's one downside about it. But overall, it is a great resource. Speaking about resources, let's see what Robert Smalls did with the money and other resources that he's gained that he gained throughout his life and see how he put that to use. In this last work called A Bold Escape Honored by Sarah Richardson, we see the legacy of Robert Smalls. Even when African Americans were getting pushed out of the gains that they made during Reconstruction, Robert Smalls was still fighting the good fight. He was still organizing people. He was still doing things that affected big change. And one change that happened on a smaller scale. And that was buying the house of his former slaver. This house is located in Beaufort, South Carolina. It's spelled Beaufort, but trust me, it's Beaufort. And it just goes to show just how relentless Robert Smalls was. And how defiant. Once more, this was scant on sources. However, when it comes to methodology, it looks like this was just compiled from different uh, sources and not really analyzed because it even says compiled by Sarah Richardson. And I'm going to leave on that note. Have a good one, everyone.